Welcome to the Nitpicking Nerds. Today, we're going to help you add some synergy to your deck. We're going to do this through ramp, card draw, and removal. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Be Easy, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. You can check out our Discord, where you can A, play Commander games, B, talk to us directly for serious, we're actually in there, and C, Learn about our Patreon, where then you can go navigate to Patreon and support us financially. For what? Yeah, well, because we're doing daily content, so we need that support, baby. Daily content? No one does that. Nobody except for the nitpicking nerds. <laughs> then what are we doing today? Uh, today, we're going to help you synergize your deck with three, uh, in three spots, not with three. In three spots, the ramp, the card draw, and the... What is the other one? Removal. Removal. I totally remember that, and I didn't have to have these remind me. Yes. Um, so in those three slots, we have like tips and tricks to really help you make your deck just a little bit better. Yes. So the overall, what's the goal? The overall goal of our deck building or commander in general, we're trying to maximize every card in our deck so that our deck is constantly working to achieve its main goal and or win condition, whether it be generate a wide board state and win with aristocrats or do this elf ball strategy or control the game and win with some haymaker. We want every single card in the deck to streamline directly relate to our win condition. Exactly. Yeah. And the examples that we're using in this video are all card draw, ramp, removal. But I want to say one thing. You can apply this to other facets of your deck. It doesn't have to specific specifically be those. I have the perfect example to start this because if you're in a deck where you say you like, you're playing the death mantle combo uh, and it combos with a creature that makes two creatures when it enters. You can look at it and say, why do I play Grave Titan? Well, I play Grave Titan mainly because it combos and makes two bodies. Well, let's step back and we can look and we can see that there are many other cards that provide you two bodies like Weapon Crap Enthusiast. Weapon Crap? Weapon Crap Enthusiast. And then there's Sengir Autocrat. So there's two that are cheaper than Grave Titan, both monetarily and mana cost. Yes. So this video probably helpful to anyone whose decks are power level five and up, who are looking to maybe improve their power level and mm. at the same time their synergy. So this isn't necessarily, how do I build a CDH deck? It's how do I make my deck, how do I make my deck synergize maximally, which will then increase your deck's strength. Exactly. So how is this deck gonna help us out? How, how busy? Yeah, so we're gonna focus on card draw, ramp and removal, like we said. Uh, we're gonna talk about changing these generic spells as we're gonna call them to like more helpful synergy just to make every possible card work for us. Exactly. We're gonna be cutting some cards from our deck, but some of these cards are gonna are just too good and too stapley and too powerful to ever cut. Like you're still gonna play your Ristic Studies, your Smothering Ties, Necropotence, Swords of Plowshares, Nature's Claims. Those type of cards are just so efficient and do the effect so well. You can't really replace them with something better because it doesn't matter. If you adding synergy isn't gonna remove how ridiculously good those cards are. Yeah, it ends up being a give and take. You give up a slight advantage in whatever card you cut for uh, what ends up being a higher advantage in synergy and overall deck mm -hmm. fluidity, but that's not true with like the best cards in the entire format. Like there's no card you're cutting Soul Ring for that's gonna make your deck better than Soul Ring already was. So not like the tippy top staples, but there's plenty of like this mid-tier kind of like generic spells that we are going to talk about. Uh, usually, we're going to keep the very best, like the pinnacle of card draw, ramp, and removal, and then end up with several flex spots. So let's say your deck wants, you're kind of in the idea where, oh, I want like 10 to 12 removal spells. Okay. So you probably have like four or five staples, like your Swords to Plowshares levels, Deadly Rollick, the best removal. Well, now you probably have like, at the end, four to five flex slots. And this is where we're talking about actually cutting or where you could be missing crucial synergy opportunity. Yes, exactly. You're going to be giving up a card that might be on paper better. And in a generic deck that doesn't exist... In a vacuum. In a vacuum, yeah. In this generic deck that doesn't exist, per se, uh, it's going to be the best card you can play in that slot. But as soon as you take a look at what your deck actually is, there's replacements for it all over the place. Yeah, zoom out and suddenly this might be the wrong decision to play this card. So we're going to start... We're going to do all three. We're going to start with card draw. And the first question we have to ask with all three of these is... Well, what deck are you? Very much matters what deck you're playing, what your game plan is, or what card type even you focus the most on, because that's going to tell you which draw spells do I want to gravitate towards. There's so many different types. Exactly. So all these cards that we're going to, the big offenders, the ones that you see in too many deck lists because they're just throwing in, um, 
they're so replaceable with cards that are going to synergize with your deck and help you do your game plan better while also providing the same effect sometimes doing even better because of the synergy the problem with these big offenders that we're going to list is that their synergy level for any given deck is like straight up zero and obviously sometimes there's exceptions but these ones i think they just offer nothing in the way of synergy and then i think only decently okay in the rate of the way of power yes exactly so the first one is like harmonize first thing i think harmonize has just fallen off the map for me uh like overall but again your green decks you're just not going to synergize with this instant sorcery now the problem is harmonize not a bad card this is not a bad rate to draw three at sorcery speed for four mana does it synergize with your green deck almost assuredly no unless you're playing specifically what the raid mother right they like probably doesn't synergize with your deck at all and you're just it's in there because you go oh i need card draw in my deck which you're right but there's probably better ways to do it i think the same can be said for there's like this whole suite of x draw spells your blue sun zenith your stroke of genius your can you name one more it's mind spring sphinx's revelation sphinx's revelation that whole type i think they get thrown into decks a lot where if you look at your deck and you go well i want to make a lot of mana i mean every deck wants to make a lot of mana it really depends you, there's obviously some situations where they shine, but I think they're thrown into a lot of decks when there's better opportunities for synergy. Exactly. And all these cards, like I said a minute ago, they are very, these are all good playable cards. We're not saying cut these from your deck immediately, get them out of here, never, ever, ever play these. But if you take the time and you sit back and you look for the cards that turn into your deck, you're going to find them. And these cards, this, these cards just don't make the cuts for us 95% of the time. Maybe one in 20 decks we build will have one of these cards in it. Yeah, just because they're good cards doesn't mean they're better than the 10 best things. Like, for example, I could say, well, am I a creature deck, an artifact deck, or an enchantment deck? They all have their 10 best card draw spells, right? And they're slightly different for each one. And I would say something like Phyrexian Arena doesn't crack the top 10 on any of those lists. So while it might be a fine card, I just never play it. <laughs> I don't ever have to. I think something that might be interesting is, again, if we go into the vacuum, Phyrexian Arena might jump into like this top 10 of like generic card spells. That's, Whoa. Of, it's interesting to think about where it's like, it's a generically one of the best draw spells. But as soon as you take off the generic part and you, and you start looking at decks and situations, it just falls off very quickly. Yeah, add to the fact that Phyrexian Arena is also very slow. And if you're trying to get high power anyway, I would just cut it. I don't <laughs> like this card. I've not been impressed with it. But move on to the next one, Windfall. I see Windfall thrown into a lot of decks too, and it as a sort of card advantage. Well, I'm going to go down to two cards and then Windfall. First of all, I think if you're not group hugging or group slugging or taking advantage of this discard thing, I just would never play any wheel ever. Um, I I mean I would play the wheels if my deck is legitimately like a 1.25 CMC. It's like all right, your wheel's insane now. Okay, I get it. Yeah, you're always going to empty your hand. That's the case where I'm going to play it. Other than that. In, unless you got the synergies with your deck, get it get it out. Though this is one that could go the other way too, where it's like, well, hey, you're you're playing Phyrexian Arena. Why don't you have Windfall instead? Because you have Hole Breacher. Thought, uh, what's the blue black one? For the most part, Windfall is in the big offenders category. It is a big offender though. No. Yes, and the last <laughs> one is Read the Bones. I just want to put this one on here because, like, what the heck? I like this card. This card's cool. This is like not a playable Magic card in Commander. I just like this. If you're in that power level range slash that type of player that we're talking about, I think you have no interest in this card whatsoever, and this is one of the easiest cuts to make your deck better. That's where I'd start. I think even I think this card is even very good on a budget. I understand the appeal that's like, okay, it's a quarter or fifty cents, but it doesn't even seem good in a budget to me. I can show you ten better, you know, fifty cent quarter cards. I mean, check out our budget bomb series. Seriously, this isn't a budget video. Some of the cards are budget, some of them are not. We're not basing it on that. Go check out our Budget Bombs playlist because it's going to have everything you could ever want that we talk about. We have a completely separate series for budget and stuff like that. So now we look at the cards. All right, those are the offenders, but how are we supposed to offer potentially better options? Well, okay, it depends on your deck. So we're going to offer some examples. You have to do the research, do your homework for your own deck. This isn't just I'm going to give you the, the advice I'm actually giving you is, hey, look at the, your deck. Find these generic no synergy cards, cut them, and then figure out your own cards that replace them. But we're going to offer some examples to get the get the blood pumping. Yeah. You're in a creature deck? Instead of playing that harmonize, B 
Beast Whisper, Guardian Project. I think Harmonize was so popular back in the day because Green didn't have all these character spells nope, like this. Didn't have any of them. But now they're everywhere. They just Beast Whisper, Guardian Project. There's a million different versions of these cards where you just draw every time you cast a creature. If you can't afford these ones or can't find these ones specifically, there's like a Primordial Sage at six mana, still good. Yeah, Primordial Sage, um, Soul of the Harvest, Soul of the Harvest, and Lifecrafters Beast are all budget too. So uh, I move on to Aristocrats, Midnight Reaper. There's Grim Horror Specs. There's when your creatures die draw a card and when these cards ceilings are higher than harmonize and the floor of a lot of these payoffs is cantrip yeah exactly going wide why not spend five mana one more than the other one and draw like six cards with schematic revelation there's no upper limit to how many cards you can draw and the lower limit are you really going to have no creatures in your creature deck that has 40 in the deck it's it's horrible if you're in this situation where you've been board wiped and you've fallen really far behind but your deck Sucks in that situation anyway. Yeah, it's <laughs> it. that's like the proactive defense, right? Like, oh, I have to play so that my deck's good when I have no creatures. Like, well, how about when we're actually doing our thing? Yeah, we want to be doing our thing. If we're not doing our thing, then we our deck just kind of is going to stick. Yeah, we'll have to rebuild. It sucks to rebuild, but I, that's that's kind of like the dice removal yeah. argument. Yeah, playing with artifacts, throw in Joyroll Weatherlight Captain. Every time you play an artifact, you'll draw a card. Yeah, I want on that same note for artifact card draw, I mean... It doesn't all have to say draw a card. Uh, Casket the Flesh Sculptor, super good with a bunch of artifacts. And mm -hmm. Scrap Trawler, Junk Diver, Mirror Retriever, this whole loop of advantage. That's not card draw, but it's the same exact thing. It's I'm counting. Advantage. like It doesn't say card draw, but it's card advantage such that I'm counting it as card draw. Yeah, card draw, card advantage um, can sometimes be used interchangeably in different ways. Essentially, it can be the same thing. Uh, playing a token stack, Art of Oblivion, another card that you can just probably take out one of those X spells that you don't have for in there for any specific reason. Draw every time you cast things. This card's kind of slow. I'd only play, probably play it in red and white decks, but hey. I've been pretty impressed with it. I I mean, I have it in a blue deck. It, the Brutaclad deck I have, it works good. So it's a cantrip, right? It enters and it just replaces itself. Unlike something that I don't like, like Phyrexian Arena. And then it just draws your card every turn when you need it. Even instant speed if you want. Yeah, if, you're, if you can reliably always make this thing go off every single turn, then yeah, it's going to be very good. Well, as soon as you get two, got your card back. You're up a card. And lastly, if your deck's playing all those X spells, but you're not really sure why, I think it's an easy cut if you're trying to self-mill or discard. Deep analysis, flash of insight. Yep, exactly. Now we're moving on to ramp. Again, ask yourself the same question every single time. What deck am I playing? Does my deck have 35 creatures in it? If it does, I'm really looking to find more spots for creatures. I want creatures to either have them die, fill up the graveyard, go wide on board, make elf tokens something for this this creature or any type or any strategy insert there so the biggest defenders we can run down these a little bit faster that i see all the time cultivate and kodama's reach they're not bad cards are they playable cards i would basically say almost no because the list of cards better that does their job better for less mana for more synergy is just too large at this point that i've just i've never put these cards in decks and i probably never will i just don't ever need them Exactly. I think I think it's the exact same thing as the Phyrexian you're going to hear. The exact same thing where it's like, again, you take the vacuum scenarios and looking at these cards, these are probably top six or seven ramp spells of all time ever printed in the vacuum. But as soon as you move out of the vacuum, you start seeing it's falling down way lower to the point that you probably don't need it in your deck. Yeah. Are you lands matters? Well, then there's th there's plenty of ramp spells that put two lands into play at once. There's your Spling Room Druids and your Harrows. And then are you... There's generic spells that are just better, like Three Visits, Nature's Lore, Sky Shark Claim. Those are just better cards straight up. So if, as, as a lack of synergy, those might be your top three. And then everything else could fall into pure synergy. So I strongly would recommend anyone watching this to reconsider Cultivate and Quinama's Reach. Uh, Chromatic Lantern, this is one I just see tossed into five-color decks or three-color decks. I promise you, your three-color deck, if your mana base is good, just doesn't need this card. Yeah, we mo you most likely do not need it. Uh, four colors and five colors is where I think this card is playable. But after that, before that, it's just like, eh, maybe avoid it. There's definitely probably better cards, and you probably don't need it. Though, if you do have one laying around, and you have a really cheap budget, yeah, I can see it being a good mana fixer. <laughs> yeah, if you open it in a booster pack <laughs> or something. All right, this one's a 99 percenter. Green Signets. Just don't play them. This well, one was like a, here's an opportunity for me to just never play Green Signets unless you're a specific artifact matters deck so just don't play those i want to sh shake my head even more like yes because i could not agree with that one even more it's like these other ones it's like if you look they're some of the best spells are printed green signets no green signets stink they're bad don't ever play green signets you don't need them well so this is kind of a perfect example of 
all the signets are the same card. They're the exact same magic card. The colors are the only thing that's different. Mm -hmm. And you look at how many cards ramp in blue red. Well, is it signets like one of the top three? How many cards ramp in green black? Okay, Golgari signets like number 50. Just figure out what the top ones are. You don't have to have an exact order, but you know, everyone who's watching this probably knows Golgari signets super low on the totem pole. Yeah. It's just the same thing with Cultivate. It's a little bit higher, but it's not near the top. Green ramp spells are the best ramp spells, it turns out. Um, mana doublers, you just generally don't need these. These are, you're going to, what's the blue moon? If you're playing a big mana deck, you'll play one of these. Um, and Explosive Vegetations, which I think has fallen completely off the radar. After the, they've printed like five different versions of exactly Explosive Vegetations, but it cycles. Uh, but, but it, it has kicker. Or it gets gates. Or it gets force. Yeah, or it gets, it gets gates or force. It's like, how many better? Th this card is gone. Yeah, Explosive Vegetation, not a terrible card. There's five better versions that I don't play. So definitely don't need Explosive Vegetation. And if you're in any synergy, I promise you, it doesn't. Explosive Vegetation isn't synergizing with your green deck that wants big creatures in play as much as some of these other options. This is not a budget video. Moving on. Okay, so, so some potentially better options. First, I think a lot of people can't overlook just regular Mana Dorks. Oh, Mana Dorks are so good. One, they're like the only one mana ramp there really is. I mean... Not literally, sorry. They're soul rings and stuff. Um, but they're like the best one mana th uh, ramp you can get. And they're creatures. They're going to synergize with those card draw spells that we just told you to put in. They're going to synergize with, oh, you're playing some elf cards like Priest of Titania? Oh, all the mana dorks are elves too. Yes. We, this isn't just us blowing smoke either. Like we've done what? It, I want to say we've upgraded at least 60 decks submitted by people to us and we do this every time this is like fundamentals of how we upgrade a deck is this elf ball deck is playing cultivate and rampant growth we can cut it for elvish mystic and wood elves or something mm -hmm. and people are just happy with the deck like every time like oh my god i didn't see this this is perfect look how many more creatures are in this deck i couldn't think of what to cut or i had been looking at this for so long this stuff actually works and i will lump in wood elves and elvish rejuvenator if your creatures or graveyard or aristocrats any marin Carador type thing, every time Wood Elves, Elvish Rejuvenator over Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Harrow. I understand that two lands is more than one land. Sorcery, complete dud. Creature, best type in your deck. Yeah, you have to realize the huge difference is, yes, there's that extra card that you're getting there, but the Wood Elf is going to get you a card in a million different ways all the time. What did I say? I said... I understand there's a there's a very direct uh, reason you can show me cultivate gets more lands than wood elves, but then I could write up a ten thousand word document mm -hmm. of all the little tiny synergies wood elves has in your deck that makes it better than cultivate. And it's like, well, it's a landslide. I think it's easy because like what we could do right now, um, and we're not going to because this would just be a waste of time. Is going back and forth for probably like a good minute. We could just list synergies that wood elves could have in a deck. Yeah, cultivate goes to your graveyard and then never comes up again. It's just in your graveyard. That's what it does. Exactly. Unless so. Boo. Uh, <laughs> Control deck? Oh, I love this card. Slow deck? Mill deck? Search for Ascanta is straight up weird far seek. And in blue. So blue doesn't have that. If you're milling, discarding, or you're a control deck, I love this card. It's so good. Yes, I think Search for Ascanta is an incredibly strong card. I think there's a uh, a lot of these MDFCs can, that can be that can be called ramp. It's not just... The flip lands. Yes, it, the, the flip... If they flip... Not yet, yeah, they're not MDFCs. They flip in the lands. They're enchantments, and they flip in the lands. There are plenty of them that are really good. They're going to be ramp, and usually you're going to give you something else out of it. So take a look into those. A uh, great example is Search for Ascanta. Yeah, it's been long enough. I think some people don't even know this exists, so they don't know to look for it. So Search for Ascanta, placeholder for a ton of ramp you might be missing. Yes, I... I've put Search for Cancer in too many decks. I've made the mistake of putting it in non-synergistic decks because I love <laughs> it so much. Uh, next, Wild Growth, Utopia Sprout. Playing enchantment deck, these cards, you just enchant your land because you're probably playing 10 enchantresses because they printed 4,000 of them now. Infinite. <laughs> Literally infinite uh, enchantresses. You're going to draw for these, and they're going to provide you things for, like, say you have a Sarah Sanctum. I know it's an extreme example, but... It is a great land, and if you're playing the deck that synergizes around it, oh, all of a sudden, it's an extra ramp spell for me. Yeah. Oh, well, now it's... And the, the, the fact of the difference between these and mana dorks even is these cost zero mana the turn you play them. Play, tap your forest, enchant your other forest with Utopia Sprawl, and you're even. So if this drew you a card, you just paid zero to draw a card because you're playing the right type of deck. Yes. And what did Cultivate do again? Oh, it went to my graveyard. Got me a land in my hand. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It was three mana. It's just, it's we can't stress how important all these little synergies, these 
all these little things that they look like, well, that's nothing. Well, that's nothing. Well, that's nothing. Well, that's nothing. Well, that's like 10 nothing. Yeah, multiply it by 50. Every creature in your deck, every synergy in your deck, it's all points towards wood elves and not cultivate. Exactly. And so, and, and like, that's what's tough about it is cultivate will always look better um, in this in this vacuum again. But as soon as you, like, you actually look at your deck and you can, I can, like, if you put the wood elves down and the cultivate and I, you give me the your deck, I can probably put cards that synergize with wood elves and synergize with cultivate. There'll be like a pile of zero here and like 30 here. Yeah. And that's why the wood elves is better. Last one, uh, Savine's Reclamation. I've been loving, loving this card in white. Basically white plus anything. I think the, I think it could be better than cultivate. Yeah. The only reason I want to jump in here is I think one very important thing about Savine's Reclamation is it is a cool, it is a good card, but I think super important to it actually being the card, the ramp spell that you need, you gotta be playing fetch land. So you can't be on a budget really. Um, this isn't Sivan's Reclamation, though it only is like four to five dollars. You have to play fetch lands. If you're once you're playing fetch lands, this becomes a top tier, awesome, really strong ramp spell. I could, I could argue, um, you could there's a budget package for it, sure, could be more trouble than it's worth. I haven't really experimented with it. There's cycling lands, there's self mill, but. You, I mean, we trust you enough as a deck builder. You should know what your deck looks like. Consider this card. It is a ramp spell for sure. Yeah. Uh, right. Lastly, there's removal. Again, you have to ask yourself what deck you're playing. That's the first question. It just helps to refresh this stuff. So now you have what deck you're playing in your head. Biggest defenders. I mean, this is the card that basically inspired this whole video. Yes, it's Terminate. We made a whole video about Terminate. And we got a lot of like kickback and like specific things saying this card's not better. This card's not better. Well... Okay, let's go over the other big offenders first here. Um, we've already gone over the reasons why we, we're we explaining the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, Vindicate, Utter End, Mortify, Putrefy. These are all cards that, again, they're very solid removal. They're going to get the job done every time. And they're, it's one of, it's cards that are going to be tough to cut, especially if you've been playing them for a while. You're mm -hmm. like, this is always performed for me. It's 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 got me out of 20,000 sticky situations. It will. It, Putrefy, Creatures and Artifacts hits, what is that, like, you know, 50% of all of all threats that could be there, maybe even higher. Mm -hmm. And it's just not going to look like you could do much better when you play it so many times. And it just it's never a dead card. But it's not the best card in the slot. Putrefy and Mortify are great for budget, but we think they're like, they're donezo. Same with Utter End. They're Vindic Vindicate too. They're just not playable when you look at the other options you have, especially lately with the green, black, uncommon removal spells they keep printing. <laughs> but we can get to Terminate. So the problem with Terminate, we decided to... I think it was definitely partially our fault. And we decided to make a minute long video. We thought we could contain everything in there. Uh, I think part of it was a lot of people did not understand what we were saying straight up. And then another part of it was, it's kind of hard to communicate in the comment section. And I think we got a little frustrated in the comments a little bit. We did. You, you could go to the comments did. and see us get kind of irritated. Number one, at just people being disrespectful and obnoxious. But number two, it's like, there's so much stuff going on. I have to juggle all of these responses. And it was just a lot. And we're like, let's just make a video about it. Let's clear everything up. Why isn't Terminate an auto-include? Why is it not the best way to destroy target creature? Yes. So again, let's, first thing we're moving, budget. We're not talking about budget in this video, like we said. So a budget out of the picture, now we go to the deck building thing that we've been talking about this whole time, where you look at your deck and again, Terminate, great in a vacuum. Fall out of the vacuum again. Just never look at cards in vacuums. We're not there. We're not there. We don't. We don't live in these vacuums. That's not dusty in there. That's the. They stink. Vacuums stink. Yes. So you have to look at it. And you can go. Well, am I playing an enchantment deck? Am I playing a creature deck? Artifacts, planeswalkers. And when you answer all one of those questions, either way, you end up with a stack of cards that sometimes, yeah. This sorcery speed synergy beats out Terminate. I've got other instants that are catch-alls. Terminate is not a catch-all. It doesn't do what Deadly Relic or Chaos Warp does. It's not in that category. It's a step below for sure. So we have cards that are like, not strictly better, but they're just far and away better. Those are the best of the best that we're not cutting. Terminate's in the category, and we look at, am I a creature deck? Okay, well, we've got, I mean, for Terminate specifically, but we'll get into regular removal, but like there's Shriek Maw and Ravenous Choops, Creature decks are going to recur them and care about the type in all zones and be able to abuse it. And it is so much more efficient and better than Terminate will be. Yes. Uh, again, they, but let's just stick on Terminate because we're talking about it right now. You're in an artifact deck. Put in Jaredi Ingenious Iconoclast. As long as you have things that you can sacrifice and get rid of, this card can be a double Terminate. It can protect itself. It can make you little dorky guys. It has a ton of versatility. It could, and again, 
it, it's just gonna it's gonna be the same thing as I was talking about before. And I love going back and reiterating points because I really want to just try and get home what I'm saying. If I take you give me your artifact deck, okay, your black red artifact deck, and I put Terminate over here, mm -hmm. and I put uh, Jaredi over here, and I start doing the piles. Nothing's gonna end up in the pile of synergy with Terminate, and like thirty or forty cards are gonna end up in this pile with Jaredi, and that is the big difference. You just all of those again. It's all the little synergies are nothing. As I, Blink One Eighty Two once said, <laughs> "All the small things." It is all the small things. It they all add up to actually doing something in, like that makes it a lot better. And like in my head. Jaredi uh, for an artifact deck versus a Terminate isn't even close. Even though Terminate is obviously the better removal spell in a vacuum. Yeah. Obviously. Not even close. But I know all those little tiny things are going to add up to being this way better card in my deck on average. Yeah, you look at this stuff and you... I think what people were doing is they're saying there's all these prerequisites for Jaredi to be better or for Deadly Rollick to be better or for Curtain's Call to be better. And it's like every deck has prerequisites that they already meet. And you just have to find, of the 20 cards I'm about to mention, find which ones already meet the, the your deck's uh, prerequisites. And then they're better than Terminate, and you just don't need Terminate in like every situation. We were talking about what's the one spot we would ever play Terminate over something else. It might be like a cast deck. Exactly. Like, you need the instant type where it's relevant in more than one zone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Cast is a perfect example where it's like, yeah, sure. After my Deadly Rocks and things, I still want instance. Okay, Terminate is probably, if we're sticking to instance. Sure. And we want to be doing the instant thing, yeah, Terminate's going to make my deck. We need to, but we need to care about that type. That's one deck. Or synergies. There's uh, there's going to be other things. There's going to be other synergies. Like, I don't know, if you're playing, like, maybe some Grixis Spellslinger deck. Storm, anything <laughs> where Terminate does more than like the other Kess isn't Like, Cast isn't the Grixis Spellslinger. <laughs> <laughs> or storm <laughs> so yeah that's the terminate rant out of the way hopefully we cleared up everything if you have more questions i mean we'll try to answer them but maybe how about like rewind the video and then play it again and then we'll answer your questions <laughs> so for non terminate specific things you've got staples like reclamation sage caustic caterpillar and now mast vandal all of which are like five cents and they're going to get you more than putrefy and any of these green naturalizes you can play if you're in a creature deck yeah i agree with that completely uh, aura shards and uh or of silence in your enchantment deck those are going to be great i think a co i think cool cards that you can play in these if you're getting into like uh you want to you really you say okay let's go budget you're on a budget and you're playing an enchantment deck that has black in it okay this is a cool deck shut up they made something really interesting here you can just play like a seal of doom like how cool like that's a great budget card yeah, it'll, it, it'll, it'll check it'll some of your there. boxes, cares about it. You can probably get it back from the graveyard. Adds devotion if you have that going on. Yeah, the green seal too. Like those those can just be, like I'm not saying those are straight up better than terminates, but like, like we need some budget options here. Okay, those are some good budget options that synergize and you can get all the small things. Yeah, I mean there's a difference between, you know, there's creature removal and there's artifact enchantment mm. removal. You know what you need. We're talking about if a card like Rex Sage, obviously that would be a switch out for something like Cross and Grip, which, oh man. I hate Gross and Grove. Never. I just, I turned away from it and I never looked back because I was so much happier with Nature's Claim. Yeah. On average, you're just going to be, again, I think it's just like, unless you put, uh, there has, it's one of those cards where it's like, if I played in this very specific meta that I've never seen, I don't know even if it exists, where everybody's playing 17 counter spells in their deck. And Sensei's Divining Top. <laughs> then I'll put Grove in my deck. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that will never live in that universe. But I think we actually finally got through this. Yeah, we did. Um, again, I think the point of this is that it's there are so many cards that you can cut or not cut um that look amazing the cards are going to look good and also on top of that you're gonna play them in your deck you you make a deck okay and you play your cultivate your phyrexian arenas and all these cards they're gonna perform they're just these cards aren't bad because they're just they're just not bad cards when we said when like when we stated in the past that these cards are unplayable it's because we look into deep synergies and we're looking to make our decks work better as a whole rather than just a bunch of good cards individually thrown into each other. Yeah, it's a, a lot of these where I'm very confident that there's enough replacements um, and something like uh, one of these, like, like Cultivate, something where I'm very confident. Show me your deck. Show me your creature deck, your enchantment deck, your artifact deck, your planeswalker deck. I'll find you the synergy. I'll find four cards better. Which is why, which was what brings out my confidence of, yeah, I'm just not going to play this card. I don't ever consider it because there's just no deck for me where this sorcery is relevant. I mean, then there's a you know one in a million where what you have, 
where you have like a wart the raid mother or something <laughs> and you need the sorcery, but that's then you just switch it and you go, oh, this wood elves in my wart deck maybe could be switched out with a cultivate. Because I can and, copy it. Yeah, then the then the creature becomes the offender and the cultivate becomes the yeah. possibility. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And the, the, like these these this isn't like steadfast rules either. Again, there could there are situations we're not one hundred percent right about like like in general, these are the rules we follow and our decks turn out great and they look great. We get good results and we get independent verification of our results. So I'm just offering my expertise to you guys. Yes, we're we're offering what we have what we have as deck builders from our thousands of games EDH and we hope it helps you make your deck better. Hey, if you like terminate, keep it in your deck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight I'm not gonna make a fist fight over this. It's just this is my recommendation. I can explain myself all day. You don't have to actually take it. I really that was it's cool. That was my one two punch. And like that, the video's over. Cool. Special shout outs to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can. Without making you uncomfortable though. Yes. And you can check out the TCG player link in the description. It is an affiliate link. Boo, 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 boo. Go to the affiliate link, check out, buy the cards that you want. And now when you check out, we just get free money, courtesy of you from TCG Player. So you pay zero extra dollars. TCG Player gives us a tip, and then you feel great about yourself because you just bought magic cards, you supported local businesses, and you just gave the Nipping Nerds more money to live their life and make more magic content. Daily content. Daily Magic the Gathering content supported by you, the patrons, the people who go to the TCG Play Link, the people who just watch the videos, the people who don't watch the videos but think about watching the videos. Even them. Even them. They haven't even watched our video yet, but they're going to in the future. Yes. Uh, so I think we're ready for a tidbit, right? Tidbit? I what? think it's your turn. Uh, uh-oh. Oh, this is easy. What are we doing after this? I don't know. This is a free roll. This is the easiest tidbit in the world. They're going to finish a Commander Legends draft. With? Nature Boy. Uh huh. Which is who? Uh, explain what the <laughs> angle and ivory. <laughs> They're are... fans of ours who drove up to visit us, and we're going to play some commander with them. My God, fan slash friends. I don't know how you missed that tidbit. Nah, because I, I'm apparently just out of it. Apparently, so we're gonna go have fun with those people, and we love our fans Special so much that we actually see them. Special shout out to Nature Boy, mm -hmm. aka Christian, uh -huh. and Angle of Reason, uh -huh. aka Lacy, mm -hmm. and Ivory, aka Ivory. Yeah, you guys are great. Yeah. Love y'all. And love everyone else. Peace out, Tripe Scout.